well, developing, developing games, apps, making decisions, making donations, they all have in common, then you need to be based on hard scientific grounds. And those scientific grounds, these findings, they are not so much developed in the laboratory, but really they must come from the field. And I'm happy for the organizers having given me the opportunity to talk about uh, our lessons from field work in Cameroon, which started quite exactly 40 years ago when I saw the first people suffering from blindness from a parasite which is called Onchocerca volvulus and causes uh, river blindness. <clears throat> the question how cattle protect from river blindness, that's uh, a finding which has developed over many years, but it has learned us that parasites not necessarily cause damage. It is a bovine onchocercosis, probably the father of the human strain, and it's com more or less completely a pathogen. Now, this logo comes from a Cameroonian artist. We don't have the money to pay Italian designers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he draw a fly, which is a vector of both uh, parasites, and uh, if there are some entomologists, there was would be surprised that they have a bit strange legs. I left it nevertheless because this uh, Cameroonian painted, he has, as you can see, no real legs. He has polio. He's completely paralyzed. He walks on his hands. And in the evening, I gave him the idea of making this drawing with the two entangled worms, which in epidemiology are intertangled. And the next morning already he came very proud to present his logo <coughs> of the project which we are carrying out for the German Foundation of uh, Scientific uh, Research. Yes, he has uh, made several paintings which we use in our lab, uh, our team in northern Cameroon. And today I've brought this uh, painting from one of his uh, students. Uh, it's a young artist still having to learn. The eye overall, which is damaged by Onchocercasis, the researchers coming to the field. And when I came 40 years ago, we went to the people in the villages telling them that they are all suffering from a disease. Like why, how, what? They have seen that all people are getting blind, and we could show them under the microscope uh, that there are small worms in their skin which de uh, destroy their eyes. So at that time, being very young, I came and I uh, told the people, well, we are coming to help you, to provide you, we don't know what, a new medicine, a new tool to control your disease. At that time, I didn't think that I was coming back only three years later. You have a contract of two years extended to three years, but now it's 40 years that I'm coming back, and I still see the people which have been young at that time and which are now old as I am. <clears throat> so what have these 40 years brought in a, a scientific uh, results? You can also see this microscope in the a garden room where you have the parasite and the vectors of tropical diseases. Have a look through this microscope. You can see the real uh, parasite. Now, also we have to talk about the, some art in research. 100 years ago, Ernst Haeckel, one of the ardent followers of Darwin, he published a work on the Kunstformen of nature in which he mainly focused on radiolaria, but uh, he also has one painting of parasites. You may see the Cercaria, Cestodes, and Trematodes. So there's also some art in research. And uh, as <coughs> Hecker claimed, there is a trend that drive for art in all what is living. But uh, do we also have such a trend for art in uh, parasites, in parasitology? For example, the complex life cycles, uh, 
as a biologist, we can see some art of nature in this uh, complicated cycles. For onchocerciasis, it's a fly which breeds in fast flowing waters after mating, it attacks different vector, different blood hosts, men and women, which then become blind. If we yes, put it in an epidemiological picture, the fly, if it comes for blood mill, has a possibility to feed on man or an animal or an, uh, warthogs or other uh, game animals. It takes up animal filaria and human filaria. And every fly which bites on animals is diverted away from a man. We call it the effect of zooprophylaxis. If you have many animals, people are protected. So the fly takes up a macrophilaria of the blood and the infective larvae escape from the labellum into the skin. This is a drawing from Peter Wenke. It's also art from a scientific illustration. Now what has been uh, going on in the Sudan savanna? First you see the annual biting rates, they're going up, they're going down, and during the last years it was going down tremendously. So you can't just come for a few years, you may just take uh, too high or too low impressions. And uh, you see the road which comes close to the river. Where it is close to the river, you have onchocerciasis uh, and you get a high Samulium biting rate and high uh, onchocerca transmission potentials. This was before ivermectin was given. But in a historic context, the villages have been up on hills before. They were moved to the road to an exit to a murder of a Syrian merchant here, they were forced to move to the road, which by chance come close to the river. And there you got the problems of onchocerciasis and the tributaries. The villages which are farther away, they are safe. Would they have taken the decision to drive the road a bit farther away? There would have been no problem of onchocerciasis. Now, Everybody went to the northern part of Cameroon where people were getting blind. And they just stopped around the area of Ngondere because there was no onchocerciasis. Nevertheless, the, the vector biting rates were much higher than uh, in the north. But why is there no onchocerciasis? Nobody has asked because you only get money to study a situation where you have a problem. You are not called if there is not a problem. Our uh, amazing uh, finding was that the high density of cattle being kept there and their parasite, which is very close to volvulus, protects human population from the transmission of onchocerciasis. So, in this circle, if we uh, provide other blood hosts for the flies, we can divert them. We call it the sore prophylaxis caused by the sore fili of the flies. This is uh, by a Greece uh, art. Europa being carried away by a bull, which is Zeus disguised as a bull. This is a sore fili in the old uh, terminology as parasitologist it means the diversion of flies. And by this cross transmission of the infective larvae of the bovine parasite to man, it creates some kind of cross reacting premonition, immunity, which also helps to keep on Kotsakasis down. We have used uh, the cattle uh, bovine parasite for developing new drugs. We found the uh, macrophilocytal action of tetracycline, cycline, and we have uh, found the serialization action of uh, high doses of ivermectin. But uh, mainly it's the social development of rural areas that matters, so we have to look for the social component. 40 years ago, 
there was no university. Now we have the first group of African students from the University of Ngondere, where there was nothing but, but, but uh, Savannah only 30 years ago. So these are the students which are now in Tübingen and finishing their th PhD thesis. And uh, we went to the villages, showed the parasites to the villages under the microscope, presented films, and so gave some impression of uh, what was going on in their skin, what was destroying their eyes. You see the young people, and most of the young people, they still have exposed legs. So we went with the German and the Cameroonian students into the national parks. It was amazing that the Cameroonian students of biology, they haven't ever seen an elephant or a lion. It was the first time that they went to a national park. So we did courses in a field parasitology, testing uh, insecticides, uh, studying the breeding sites of samulium flies, uh, developing uh, the magic cow for catching flies or feeding flies on cattle. So the lessons from the bovine model. First, what you can see here, that's an onchocerca nodal, close to the eye, mostly they are based on the belly. But the cow looks very healthy. Why? This isn't this the case in human onchocerciasis? So we can use this bovine model to study the biology of onchocerca parasites, to follow up their uh, development, which we can never do in human host, make chemotherapy trials, and uh, we have also shown by successful vaccination that there's a possibility of uh, providing some premonition. And we have seen that the closing can prevent the flies from biting on the lower legs. Only about some 60 to 80 years ago, people were almost naked, fully exposed. Nowadays, the macrophilaria on the limb is the flies bite close to the body. If you protect uh, the lower bodies, there's no more transmission. So we can reduce the transmission index by almost 89% just by protecting the ankles. So this was all data from 86. Uh, the girls were exposed to 70% at the river, 61 as a woman, boys at 75%, men at 46%. Since the last 30 years, this has again decreased. So nowadays, men are only about 20% exposed. Girls and women are more exposed than men because they always like to show their lower legs and ankles. <laughs> so the so rural development would be an important factor. But uh, what can be done in control for a disease which has a basic reproductive ratio of over 100%? So in areas of co-transmission of other filaria, 30 years of ivermectin have now stopped the disease, not in an area with very high uh, human biting rates and without cattle. And it's only a question of time till ivermectin resistance shall develop, when and where. And also we need to know how density dependent regulatory factors uh, would decide how quickly endemicity recovers. And of course, is there any uh, animal reservoir? Everything in biology is linked to evolution. Could the same parasite come back to a, a man again? And if it comes to control, elimination, or education, the cost is getting higher and higher. And at the end, the disease might disappear, but the parasite is still alive. So I'm thanking for your attention. You can look on, on our website, and uh, there are a lot of people engaged in this collaboration. Thank you.